What's up everybody, The Networkberg here. Hope you've been doing well. In this video, we're going to be going over triple PoE on router OS on Mikrotik, how to configure it as a server, how to connect as a triple PoE client, as well as just a brief overview of what it is. So put on your thinking hats and let's get into the video. All right, so we're in our little ISP environment and we are going to provide PPPoE to our customers. So what is the benefit of triple PoE? Well, it allows us as an ISP to assign IP addresses linked to specific usernames and we could also maybe limit the amount of bandwidth those accounts can use on the network. It is very useful for WISPs. If you've got wireless links, you could probably not probably you can have the people connect on the WLAN with the username and password and it will give them an IP and they can have internet access done and dusted and triple PoE is a layer two protocol and it's been running pretty well for a long time especially since the the, the dial-up days and the ADSL days that's where triple PoE really shine but it still has its place in today's networking world especially with wisps so let's set up a triple PoE server on our PE1 which is this router which has internet access already I'm just going to open up Winbox to it so I'll connect on to PE1 and I'll just maximize the screen so to get to the triple PoE we'll just click on this triple P and we'll go to triple PoE servers and from here we can just hit on the plus and we can give the service a name. So let's call this our triple PoE underscore server. Our interface, so this is important because triple PoE does run on layer two again, you'd have to define something for layer two. So it has to either be an interface, a VLAN, a WLAN, something that is actually connecting out to the network. So I, in my head, it, I have a free open port on ether nine, which I will connect to a new router. So I'll just select ether nine. I can leave all of the other se sections blank. I don't need to tune anything there. There are cases where you might tune stuff like that, but really you don't need to for the base install. The next thing we want to do is set up a profile. So by default, you have the default and default encrypted profile. So I might just call this, uh, create a new profile, click on the plus. I might call this my triple PoE LAN clients I can set up a local address so the local address will be what is my routers address the PE's PE one's address the servers address because this is going to be the IP address that the clients will be connecting to as a default gateway because a triple PoE tunnel it's the same as a VPN tunnel almost it allows them to get to this other remote end so that it can pass traffic so I'm going to make this 10.88.0.1 remote address. So this will be the IP address that you give to your clients. So if I put here 10.88.0.2, that's great. I can give one customer a triple PoE connection. But what about if I wanted to give 100 customers the same connection? It's going to fail. So in that case, what I can do is I can set up an IP pool. So I'll go into IP pool. And here I've already set up a triple PoE pool, but let's create a new one call it triple poe dash pool one let's give it the addresses so 10.88.0.2 up until 10.88.0.200 and let's apply that so now we have a triple poe dash pool one and if we go back to our triple p profile if i click here i can actually select that ip pool and now my triple PoE server will give out addresses in that range. All right, so next thing, uh, we don't need to do anything with the bridges, the filters. So this is the nice thing. You can actually uh, set up some interesting things with the bridges or the filters. So you could set up some firewall rules to block certain things from the clients. You could even set up some queues to shape some services, etc. But I'm just going to leave this like this because we don't need to add anything extra to get this working from the profiles last thing we need to do from the server is we need to set up a secret or we can go into our secrets 
then we can click on this plus then we can give it a name. So in this case, I might just make this network berg1. My password, I will make this password 123. Please select a more secure password than that. Your service, let's make this uh, triple POE. And we can select the profile. So I'm going to make this my triple POE LAN clients. The caller ID, this is if you wanted to specify only specific people to be able to connect from this address. So maybe um, you you know what their WLAN's address is and you only want people from that WLAN to connect with this username. This is what you could use the caller ID for. And that's it. I'm just going to apply this. I'm going to hit OK. So now I've got a triple PoE server that's enabled. I have a profile and I have a secret, which is basically a username and password that I've set up as well. Now we need a client. So I'm just going to add a new node to my EvenG topology. Let's make it another Mikrotik. And let's add that. I just need to stop my PE quickly since I'm using community edition in this video. I need to connect it to Ether9, which was the server. And now I can start both Mikrotik routers. All right, so now we just need to wait for them to start up. Luckily, that will be super quick. <laughs> um, and what I want to do is I quickly just want to enable Ramon and this new Mikrotik router so that we can access this from Winbox. So I can show you the setup on Winbox because I know a lot of you, you like Winbox. Personally, I'm more a, a, a CLI type of guy, but Winbox is actually really nifty, really cool. GUI. It's it's a lot better than a lot of the other vendor stuff. I can I can guarantee you that. It, Webfig is gross, but, but Winbox is, is pretty good. All right, so let's add a tool. Roman set enable yes, and there we go. Now we can connect to this router over Roman. So let's do that. Let me connect to Roman. Let's try like this. There we go. And let's find this Mikrotik, which is this new router we just brought up, which is blank. It doesn't have any usernames, password or anything configured. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our interfaces. We're going to hit the plus and we're going to scroll down and find a triple POE client. All right, now from the client, we can quickly go into our general and in general, you can give it a name or you can just leave it like this. Interfaces, again, since this is running layer two, we need to define exactly which interface is connecting to the ISP. In my case, it is ether one. We go to dial out. The important bits here is your username. In my case, it was the net or sorry, just network berg one. Password was password one, two, three. This profile, you don't need to worry about. You can leave this on the default. And then we can add a default route, yes, and I can apply that. And there we go. My triple POE client has connected. I can see it is receiving and the interface is up. If I go into my IP addresses, I'll see that I am receiving 10.88.0.200 as an IP address from my server. And there's my network, my next hop, which is 10.88.0.1. If I go into my routing, I will have these routes configured or I'll, I'll be receiving this default route from my triple POE. And then what I can do as well is just quickly give myself a DNS address. So let's make my server 8.8.8.8 .8 and quickly see, can I ping www.google.com? And I can, how amazing is that? That is awesome. So I've just set up a triple POE client and server and I've brought everything up on the environment. One more thing that I wanna show you is from the server side, let's just quickly connect to PE1. So from the server, what we'll get, be getting here is if I go into my triple P and I go to my interface, you'll see that it's created a dynamic triple POE interface on my network, which is now connected. And from here I can see stuff like what was the local address? What's the IP address that I provided to them? What's the username that connected? 
there's my caller ID. So that was the MAC address of my Ether1 on this new Mikrotech. So again, if, if that was a different caller ID and I, I specified only for this one to connect, then that other person wouldn't be able to connect with the username. All right, cool. So this is basically going to be a wrap of the video. Um, I'd like to thank you guys again for watching and I'd like to remind you to subscribe, share, like, all that stuff for the video. I appreciate it immensely and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.